we are going to zero in a little bit more on 1.4, identifying and correcting errors. This is something that I've noticed has caused some confusion with my students. Um, hopefully we've fixed that already, but uh, for others out there not at my school that are using this, I hope this is of help. Uh, so I'm going to break errors down into four types. In reality, I think the AP exam has them listed as three. Um, really an overflow error you could technically, in my opinion, kind of lump that under a logic error, but it is uh, kind of specific, so I, I did make a kind of a special slide uh, area for it. So let's jump into logic errors. Okay, the main thing you need to know about logic errors are they are errors that will occur that you may not pick up on unless you're testing or if something doesn't produce the desired result. So a logic error does not cause a crash. Your program launches, it runs, um, it does something, it just does not do what it's supposed to. So your program can and will run to completion, but your directions or what you want to happen doesn't match up with what actually happened. So an example, um, if you are making a game, and those of you that have used code.org, uh, this might look familiar, um, and you want the game to end if lives equals zero, but in your code you say if lives less than zero. Uh, that would be an example of a logic error because technically zero is not less than zero, so if your lives were zero in this case, um, it would not end. You would have to get to negative one. So that would be an example of a logic error. Uh, you're, you could keep playing your game, you just would have negative one lives. Uh, that would show up when your game was over as opposed to zero. It could obviously be fixed by setting it directly, like a, um, that should be a double equal sign anyway. Um, that's a little bit of pseudocode, but you hopefully get the idea. Um, another example would be if you wanted to return odd numbers, so you use the mod operator, and instead of saying uh, to return if number uh, mod is equal to two, you say uh, this return, so I, have a typo in my slide, um, so I do need to fix that. So you want to return, replace return odd with even. So if you wanted to return even numbers, and instead of saying to return if number, you say that, so I apologize, flip flop that. But again, you can kind of get the point. You're gonna return something. Um, it's just gonna return odd versus even, or even versus odd. If it doesn't match the intent, that would be considered a logic error. So I do apologize, I got that backwards there. Um, but again, hopefully you get the point. A syntax error is an error that occurs where the rules aren't uh, being followed. So if you're using code HS, um, for example, trying to use something different than code.org, um, the program won't run. Uh, so especially if you're doing Carol the dog um, in any of those activities, um, when a syntax error is detected, um, the program never launches. You get the little dialog box that pops up and usually tells you like unexpected token or unmatched parentheses. Um, so in languages where you have a compiler, the code usually will not finish compiling uh, due to the syntax error or it may compile but it won't run. Um, so an example you might see is if you have a variable um, named in a way that's not allowed within a programming language. So for example in JavaScript, uh, we are not supposed to name variables starting with a number. So if we create a variable and call it VAR, and then we say, hey, I'm creating a variable and I'm gonna call it 3D printer, um, and I wanna set it equal to the value HP. A couple of things wrong with this. One, I can't start the name with a number. Two, I can't have a space. So this is gonna be a syntax error. I'm not following the rules of the language. Um, another example would be an unmatched. So you maybe have an opening parentheses and you don't close it, or you have an extra closing parentheses without a front one to match it. Um, same thing with your brackets. Um, if you forget to end a line of code with a semicolon, um, you try to insert a comment, but you use the wrong formatting and it tries to execute the code um, and it does not recognize it as a comment. Any of those things would be syntax errors. You're not following the rules of the language and it's going to throw an error. Uh, runtime errors. Um, this is a mistake that occurs during the running of your program and it causes your program to crash. Um, so a runtime error does not prevent your program from running initially, but when you get to that chunk of code, it freezes, it gets stuck, um, something happens. Um, an infinite loop is a prime example of this. Um, you just get stuck and forever and ever you're there. Um, you cr another example would be if you created a variable called clicks, but when you later update the uh, value, you refer to it as clicks with a C. Um, that would, again, you're 
program might run, but you may eventually when you get to this point where it needs to update, if it's nested in like an if statement, um, and you have an on event that triggers it, then it's triggered, then it's gonna throw an error. It won't know what clicks is. It'll kind of lock down the program at that point um, because of a capitalization issue. Um, if you accidentally store a number as a string, um, so common thing I've seen here is if a student is making an interactive app and you use get text, get text, get text, and all of a sudden you have a number that you want to perform a calculation with and you say get text and it can get text from a number value in it inputted, but it's gonna put those quotation marks around it. So if you accidentally store a number as a string in that way, then you try to perform a mathematical operation such as subtraction or multiplication um, that can't be executed on that data type, that is a runtime error. Another example might be if you're traversing a list, but you have an index uh, value that does not exist, either like a negative index value or an index that is uh, larger than the list, um, that could cause a runtime error. Lastly, this is covered earlier in the semester, usually um, when we're first learning about binary um, numbers and storage, but an overflow error occurs when a program tries to handle a number that is outside of the range it's capable of handling. Generally, a number is too large or too small, um, meaning there are not enough bits in memory um, to represent that value. In JavaScript, we do get into the big int uh, value type, which is used to help with this. Um, kind of a subsection of overflow errors would also be a round off error. Um, that would be where if you're trying to represent a value that is too specific, for the amount of bits or bytes available for storage, um, that's gonna be a fraction or a decimal that you just can't quite get to. Um, generally, these errors won't cause your program to shut down. They just can cause major calculation issues that cause your program not to run as intended. Um, that's why I would somewhat classify them under logic errors, but um, just in case you get a specific question about these types of errors, I wanted to dedicate some time to explain them. Uh, ways we can test for errors. Um, this is referred to in the industry as QA testing for quality assurance. Um, once you feel like you have a chunk of code that's ready to test, um, you can use the console log if you don't have your user interface ready yet, or if it is, you can use your user interface. Uh, interface. So at that point, you can run through what we call test cases that are at or beyond the intended limits. Um, I'll get to some examples in a second. Um, so you, in order to test for errors, you do have to know what the program requirements or expectations are to be able to test for those errors. So you need to kind of know what it's supposed to do and make sure it does it. Um, so those of you that have used code.org, uh, when we are covering, I think this was early on when we were looking at if else statements, there was that uh, t movie ticket generator app where we had senior citizen tickets, child tickets, and then just regular tickets. There was also another portion to that where if it was like Friday and there was a code free Friday, you could do this, weekend tickets were different, all that good stuff. I didn't want to make it that complicated. This still serves as a good example. Um, but basically if you were just, you know, ticket prices are the same every day based on age, uh, Monday through Sunday, Sunday through Saturday, however you want to say your week. Um, senior citizens should be seven, children 12 and under should be five, and everyone else should be 10. The way you would test for that was you would input uh, different ages. Some examples you might want to try would be 11. Okay, the reason we would try that, that is less than the 12, that should give me a $5 ticket. 12, because I say children 12 and under, I'd want to test that to make sure 12 gives me five. Then 13 is one beyond that, so I'd want to make sure I test that out and I should get $10. Then I want to try a few numbers between um, 13 and senior citizen age is generally 65, so I tried 13, I tried 35, kind of right there in the middle, it should give me 10. I tried 64, which is one less than the limit, um, and then 65, um, that, at that point, that would be senior citizen, so that should be $7, 66 should be $7, 75, just going a little bit above, should be $7. So that'd kind of be a, an example of testing out. So all of those, I'd want to run all those different ones just to make sure that this uh, does what it's supposed to do. Um, if any of those resulted in the wrong output, but it didn't crash my program, I would know I probably had a logic error. Maybe I didn't put the most specific case first. Maybe I used a less than instead of a greater than or a greater than instead of a less than, those sorts of things. Um, if the program crashes, 
that means I have a runtime error somewhere. Um, I need to figure out what's going on, and then if it doesn't run at all, all right, likely I have a syntax error, um, something I need to fix so that it can actually run. Okay, so that uh, concludes the little review on errors. I hope that was helpful. If you have any further questions, please reach out.